Hello everyone, I'm Ben with the BTC Sessions. I'm here in downtown Calgary, Canada, and today I'm gonna to be checking out the Electrum wallet for desktop. And I'm running this on Mac OS. So Electrum is a little bit more of an advanced wallet. So if you're not privy to how to construct a basic Bitcoin transaction, or perhaps you've never used hardware wallets and you're just a beginner, I encourage you to check out the links down below with content that I've created around those subjects. Do that first before checking out this wallet. But for those of you that are a little bit more advanced in your Bitcoin usage, I wanted to check out this wallet uh, because it's been around for a long time and it enables a lot of different features that most wallets do not. So without further ado, here is my video on Electrum for desktop. After these messages, we'll be right back. Do you guys enjoy my content? If so, there's two easy things that you can do to make sure you always know when stuff comes out. Number one, of course, hit that subscribe button. Number two, hit that little bell icon right next to the subscribe button so that you make sure you turn on notifications every time I put out new content. Now, onto the video. So, I've already downloaded Electrum for desktop. I will have links for that down below. But once I open it up, you're going to see your wallet name here. Now, you can rename this to anything you like because you're being uh, you're creating it from scratch. So, I'm going to name this one BTC Sessions Test. And I'm going to go ahead and hit the next button. Now, we get to choose what kind of wallet we want. Standard, two-factor, multi-sig, or import. Uh, we're starting from scratch. So, we're just going to select standard and hit next. Now, uh, are you going to create a new seed? Do you have one? Do you have a master key? Do you have a hardware? Again, we're starting from scratch. We're going to create a new seed. So we'll hit next. Now, we get to choose a standard or a SegWit uh, wallet address type here. Now, please note, BEC32 is going to be used here, which means essentially it's not backwards compatible. Some wallets will not be able to scan your addresses unless they have SegWit. I'm okay with this because I'd like to drive SegWit forward, so I'm going to use the SegWit option. If you're not okay with that, you can just hit standard and it will work fine with any wallet. Uh, now, this is your wallet generation seed. It's basically a backup of the keys to your account. So you have 12 words here that you need to write down and store safely. Do not share this with anybody because they will be able to access your funds. So you're gonna go ahead and you're going to write down these words and come back. Okay, so now that you've written down those words, we're going to go ahead and hit next. And it gives you a screen where you're going to go ahead and type in all of the words in the order you've written them down. You'll notice that it gives you suggestions of words that it could be to kind of speed up the process and make sure you don't have spelling errors. Once you get through all 12 words, you will see the next button actually light up and you can go ahead and hit it down below to move on. Now, this is where you encrypt your wallet keys. I highly recommend you do this. Select a password, one that you will remember. There is no such thing as password recovery here, uh, but this prevents somebody from being able to spend from your wallet if they get a hold of your computer or just your wallet file. So if your computer gets hacked. Now, it can be brute forced, but uh, keep in mind, it's just an extra layer of security. We're gonna go ahead and hit next, and your wallet is now set up and ready to use. Okay, so now that we've set everything up, we're just gonna do an overview of what we see in front of us. Okay, so up top, we can see the Electrum version number, the name of your wallet, and the type of wallet, in this case, standard, that we have. We have three tabs up top, your history of previous transactions, a send screen you can tap on, and a receive screen that you can tap on, and we're gonna get into those two in a moment, but let's go back to the main page. Here is where you're gonna see all your previous transactions. You can sort by date, description, amount, and balance, and all of your transactions would be in the middle here. Of course, we don't have any right now. Down below, your balance in Bitcoin, in US dollars, and you can see a peg of how much Bitcoin is worth in US dollars, and you have some more settings down here. If you tap the lock, you can change your password. You can tap the settings here, and you have a whole bunch of stuff. We'll get into this in a moment. Uh, if you tap here, you can get your seed, the backup phrase we just wrote down. We don't need that right now, so I'm not gonna bother entering the password. And finally, you can tap here to get your network information, servers, all that stuff. We're not gonna dive into that yet. So we're gonna close that up and move on. 
Oh, and one other thing up top here, uh, you have all your other sub menus. Uh, we weren't go aren't going to use those right now, but momentarily we will. Okay, so I'd like to dive into the settings a little bit more just to see what's in there and change some stuff for myself. The first tab is centered around fees, uh, so you can change things as to how the fees are set. You can have a static amount, you can have it kind of change as is, or you can check the mempool for how busy it is. Um, you can edit me fees manually, this is on by default, and you can use RBF, which is replaced by fee. So if you find a transaction isn't going through fast enough, you can change the fee after the fact. So I'm going to keep that on. Uh, if we head over to the transactions tab here, uh, there's all this stuff regarding change addresses. Now, if you're unfamiliar with what these are, you can hover over each one and it will actually give you an explanation as to which uh, these options, uh, what they'll do. It's all centered around uh, improved anonymity with your transactions. Now, if you go to appearance, there's a couple things I'd like to change. Language is fine, decimals are fine. I'm gonna change the base unit uh, to Satoshis, which is the smallest amount of Bitcoin you can have. I just like seeing this because it keeps me in a saving mode and that's kind of where I'm at right now. Uh, you can change your block explorer, so which company is running the node that you see your information from. And you can also go ahead and change the theme. So the theme here, I'd like to use the dark theme and we won't see that enact until we uh, restart. Now I'm gonna change my currency, my fiat currency. I'm in Canada, so I'm gonna go ahead and find CAD, select that. Uh, a lot of these options in the middle, I don't really need to see the history of the rates of Bitcoin at the time, so that's fine, I'm gonna leave all that off. Um, and then I'm gonna change the source of my price to local Bitcoins. I just find it's a bit more accurate here in Canada when I do that. Now, uh, this is all related to um, identity stuff. You don't need to know about this, but there are links uh, explaining it. I'm going to leave that stuff alone, and uh, I'm going to hit close. Now, it's going to tell me here if I want to see those changes. I have to restart Electrum. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to hit quit. And once that closes down, I'm going to open it up one more time, and we should see those changes enacted. So I can already see that the dark theme is being used now. So I'm just going to plunk in my password. And when I hit next, we should notice the other changes, which are actually down here in the bottom left. I can see that it's now Canadian dollars, and I can also see it's uh, Satoshis as opposed to full Bitcoin. Okay, so I want to show you one more thing before we get into everything else is how to create a backup of your wallet as a file. So you're going to go to file and save copy. And this is where you get to actually save a new copy of the exact same wallet. So um, I'm going to name this BTC Sessions Test 1. Um, and I want to save it to my desktop. So I'm going to click on desktop here. Um, I'm going to type in the name of my file up top, BTC Sessions Test 1. And then I'm going to go down to the bottom right and I'm going to click save. So what this does is it creates a new file on my desktop, which is an exact copy of the wallet I had on my desk uh, on my computer already. So in order to access that, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to shut down Electrum. So I'm going to go up and I'm going to hit quit. I'm going to reopen. And so once I get to the main screen, it's going to say, which wallet do you want to use? So I'm going to hit choose and I'm going to navigate to my desktop and click on BTC sessions test one. When I hit open, I'm prompted for a password. This is the exact same password that we use for the other wallet. And I'm gonna hit next, and that opens it up. Again, exactly the same wallet, regardless of what computer you're on, where you are, this is a copy of your wallet. Now keep in mind, when you have a file like this, somebody can try to brute force it, somebody can try and use uh, your password and try and get in. So I'm gonna quit, I'm gonna go back out, and I want to show you this because I did this the first time. When I opened up Electrum again, I wasn't sure where my old wallet file was because I neglected to check. Um, so I was a little confused because it defaulted to the new file that I had created. So if you actually delete the file and get rid of it or move it somewhere else, um, what you'll see instead is you're gonna see default wallet um, because it's not sure what file you wanna use. If you hit choose, it will default you back to the folder and you should see your old wallet file there. But um, depending on your computer, what you're running, uh, it, it may be stored in different areas. So I'm gonna select my old wallet file, put in my password and hit next. And here we are 
back everything back to normal. Okay, now that we've gotten through all of that, let's test out receiving a transaction. So when I hit the receive tab, you're going to see your receiving address, you're going to see a QR code, and you can tap this button to copy your address to the clipboard, which can then be pasted wherever you like. All right, so that's the information people need to send you money. You can actually specify an amount you'd like to receive. So as you type that in, notice the QR code is changing, um, and it also shows the Canadian dollar amount beside it. You can also set that request to expire eventually, uh, but we don't need to do any of that right now. If you tap on the QR code, it opens it up in a separate window as well. Now, what I'm gonna be doing just off screen here is I have Samurai Wallet on my mobile phone and I'm going to be constructing a transaction and sending some money to this wallet. Now, if you are unfamiliar with Samurai Wallet, I will link down below to a tutorial on how to use it. Uh, but right now what I'm doing is I'm sending over some Bitcoin so that we can then play around with it. Once it arrives, I believe we'll see some sort of a notification here uh, and we'll be able to check on the status of the transaction and so on and so forth. Uh, so let's just wait for that to come through. Okay, we now have a notification in the top right and we can see down below we have some unconfirmed funds. If I tap on the history tab, we now see the transaction listed here. Uh, we can see again down below. If we double click on it, then we can see all of the advanced transaction data here. And uh, you may or may not need this. You can see the size, you can see the fee that was paid, all of that, inputs, outputs. If that is not important to you, then that's fine, but it's good to have there just in case. Uh, so we will return when this is confirmed and we can actually send out the funds from the wallet. All right, so we have a confirmation on this transaction. If I double click into it, you can see one confirmation, all of the details there, and the pie chart on the left starts to get filled in. Eventually, after six uh, confirmations, it'll be all filled in. So if I go to the Send tab, we're gonna try sending out. Uh, now, there is a QR code scanner here, or you can paste in an address. Uh, I have a file here with an address that I'd like to send to, so I'm going to paste that into the Pay To field. Um, now, I I could enter a description here, I'm not gonna bother. And then you're gonna set the amount that you'd like to send out. Oh right, it's in Satoshi's. Uh, so I'm gonna send out half of this. I'm gonna send out uh, 50,000 Satoshi here. Uh, and you can see the Canadian dollar amount beside it. Now down below you get to set your transaction fee and it's actually a slider. So I can slide this left to right and it'll actually tell me how long it's expected the transaction to officially confirm and it'll tell me the total amount for the uh, the transaction. You can also preview it here and see all of that information right in front of you. I'm fine with this so I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna hit send and I'm prompted to enter my password again. So if you do leave your wallet open, you've got that extra layer of security still and it sends off and everything is all good. Now, I did notice that transactions tend to not pop up in the history right away. It is a little bit of a pain, uh, kind of annoying that it doesn't show up super fast. Um, if you do restart the wallet, it does tend to be there right away. Um, sometimes if you click around a little bit, it'll, it'll show up. I'm not quite sure the reason for the delay, um, you know, it's it can be worrying when somebody goes to send it off and they don't see it immediately. So hopefully we see this uh, show up pretty quick. There's no refresh button that I can see here, but uh, yeah, so I don't know. It Oh, there we go. There it is. So I guess it's not a super long wait, but it can be disconcerting if you don't see it right away. Again, transaction, you can double click on it and uh, see all of the relevant information if you'd like to go into that. But other than that, uh, transaction is sent and we're good to go. Now, there is one other cool thing I wanna show you with the send function here. So if I go to send, normally you can just put in a single address, but there is actually one other cool thing. I believe it is in the tools bar. So if you look down a little bit, there's an option that says pay to many. And when you click on this, you can now enter more than a single address. So you're sending to multiple people at the same time. So in the uh, document behind me here, I've got two addresses now. So I could copy one and I could paste it in on top 
and then I could go down a line and enter a second or third or fourth address and paste it in. And once I have that, I can continue on to the transaction as normal and send off to multiple parties in a single transaction. This actually will save me on uh, transaction fees as well because it's being optimized. Now, one last cool thing I want to show you guys with Electrum, I'm just going to reopen here and we're actually going to use a hardware wallet. Uh, so I already have a ledger plugged in. What I need to do is I need to type in a name that I'd like to have for that wallet. It's going to tell me it does not exist. You're creating a new file. That's fine. We're going to hit next. Uh, what kind of wallet do you want? I just want a standard wallet in this case. I'm going to hit next. And now the key store, you're going to look down and the last option it tells you, you can choose a hardware device. And when I hit next, if it's plugged in and you've put in your pin and everything, it should recognize uh, the device. You can hit next. You get to choose your wallet type. So uh, do you want a legacy address? Do you want SegWit? Or do you want native SegWit? Which is not actually available with the regular Ledger software. So Electrum actually gives you some extra options here. So I'm going to choose that. I'm going to hit next. Uh, encrypt wallet file. That sounds great to me. I'm going to hit next. And it will open up and you have the exact same functionality as you did with the regular Electrum wallet, but you're utilizing your ledger or, or whatever uh, hardware wallet you happen to be using here. Everything is the same. You can send, you can receive, all of that is the same with the added security of having a hardware wallet. Um, so I'm just super happy uh, that Electrum is so versatile and it gives you options above and beyond actually what the native hardware wallet software would. Uh, so for advanced users that really want to get the most of their ledger or treasure, uh, really great with Electrum and I'm super impressed with it. Um, can't say enough good things about this. So uh, yeah, feel free to dive in. Now let's just take a quick look. If we quit and we go back in, um, we should be able to choose now. So it defaults to Ledger, that's the last one that was open, but if we choose, we see both files. So BTC Sessions Test is still there, Ledger is still there. Now, if I go to open it, um, it is still plugged in and initiated, uh, and I can just open it up like normal, but if it wasn't plugged in, you would not be able to reopen and get in and start sending and receiving transactions. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Don't panic if it's not plugged in and it's not working. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please don't forget to hit like and subscribe, drop a tip if you're able to, and share this video. I'll see you guys next time on the BTC Sessions.